Welcome everyone to another special episode of Super Sessions with star guitarist Sebastian Falva. <laughs> if you're not aware, you should be aware and you should be following him because he will lay out these like casually, flippantly, almost insultingly, these licks on Instagram. And every time I watch, I go, boy, do I feel bad. Full disclosure, I took a lesson mm -hmm. with Sebastian last week. And my first lesson, probably like 10 years. We're going to go over some of those concepts mm -hmm. that yep. really kind of blew my mind. Well, thank you, yeah. I'm going to go over some of his approach and uh, sensibilities in the guitar. Because you'll see, if you go on his Instagram, you check, just peruse, just two or three, you'll be like, wow, I've never heard anyone play like this before. Oh, well, that's nice. It is nice. I am thank nice. You. But it's also true. Just because it's nice doesn't mean it's not true. You went yeah, to Berkeley, right? I did, yes. Uh, I went from 2014 to 2018, and I told my parents when I was younger, um, I wanted to go to Berkeley. And they said, okay, if you can get in, you can go. That's How good. hard could that be? Yeah, yeah. And, and it was... It was the it was the best. the The time spent at Berkeley was something I think about all the time. It's the most like musically fulfilling place you could ever imagine. It's really great. The atmosphere and the environment. Some people didn't like it, but I'm not that I'm not that person. Right. It I seems like most it. people I've met have said it's amazing, and it was. Yeah. It's it 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 opened me up to so much music. Like I think a lot of people don't have open ears, and that affects their playing, and they wonder why they're stuck. How much does outside input affect? like your output so much i would say because if you think about it most people have listened to music more than they've played guitar in their life right you can't play guitar in the car you can't play it on a plane you can't play it on a working out you, you only listen to music or podcast right and just because you listen to something doesn't mean you're going to play like that there's no like bebop or or like romantic classical music on what i played but that's stuff i listen to you know right right and it's even if it's a small thing, it affects your sensibilities, not just what you're playing. Music can affect the way you approach it and, and not come out that way. Right. It's more than just the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more <laughs> than just like, I transcribe this thing, therefore I play like that. Now, that's not the case. We could switch into Hendrix mode real quick or Clapton. Right. And like all of the detail in that playing is why Clapton sounds like that or why Hendrix sounds like that. Like bends and stuff Ooh. like the... <laughs> Hendrix did that. We talked about it the other day. Yeah. Hendrix would go... Instead of being in tune with his double stop, you push it a little sharp, it sounds more like Hendrix. That's great. He played this, and, and I, I never had realized that. I was like, that is Hendrix. I'm like, I never thought Yeah, he's that. over bending it, and I think it probably has to do with the fact that it was floating. I'm so used to it staying in place yeah, it's with there. my Les Paul that I've had my whole life, and you know, and this, and yeah. these are the two, these are the two guitars I really connect with, this one and my... Must ball. I grew up playing strat, so I just yeah, assumed I, I was like, I guess this is what it's like to bend. Yes. And then when I got a telly, I was like, oh. So much better. This is a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why those guys on those guitars do it. Yeah. That's, that's why you don't so hear easy. a lot of crazy bending, I guess, besides Jeff Beck, but that's not really the same thing. The different. It's yeah. very different. Let's talk about tone. Sure. Because I bought the yep. special cranker literally because it's on all the time. you had it. A lot of things I talk about in my videos is like, it's not just the pedal. It's like you're buying the pedal because you want to express something tonally yeah. within a frequency. 100%. And that, like, for some reason, that'll resonate. Right now, what's resonating with me, a tweed tone. Yeah. But, like, not what a clear it? tone, not a sharp no, tone. No, like, 100%. I want, especially That's if what I'm playing, say. like, um, a double stop or triple stop. It's like for, there's something that happens when it's, like, oh, a you, lot the of... Oh, the rub. Yeah, when it's, like... <laughs> Yeah, those harmonics in there, yep. And you hear that? The main thing I play through is a tweed champ style thing. I still run this into the front to get that sound where it's not smooth. And the thing that's really popular now is dumble this and dumble that, right. which is nonsense. <laughs> nobody nobody knows what that what that sounds like. I have no idea what a dumble is. I have, a, well, I have one friend who has played Robin Ford's multiple on um, multiple times it is actual the dumble yeah it is so loud and so clear there's no pedal that sounds like that <laughs> there isn't right. and there isn't a pedal that sounds like anything there's how you play through it to get the sound like that air clapton sounds pretty much the same and he's using a tweed now he's using bandmasters that were dumble modified but that probably just means it's more like a vintage one and a strat it still kind of sounds like bino 
<laughs> it's a right, little which different, was, yeah, which is a totally right now, different thing. Uh, Les Paul, right? But no, what I like about this, there, there's so much character and the kind of bass that it has is so nice under the fingers. And there's like a decent. I mean, it's not like a rolled off bass sound. Yeah. But it's not muddy. It's not. It's not where the bass lives. You know, like a bass guitar right. just yeah, lives like in a place you don't want to get in the mix there. Right. And yeah. It's just so is nice. Just like the cleanup's not clean. I don't want, like, the cleanup isn't. Well, I don't want that. I don't want a JC. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. Yeah. That's better. I didn't change anything on the guitar. It's just a little bit of just, the edge of breakup, which is what we all say, which is true. I think it's, like, very rare that you would even want it to be super clean anyway. It's like, yeah. I, I feel like when it's very clean, you actually can't hear how. The person is playing it. No, it's stiff. Because it's like a clean note is a clean note. Yeah. And so I can't tell how hard is he hitting it. Well, it's like it's, well, it's super clean. I have yeah, no and, idea. Yeah, there's no give. That's the thing. I, I uh, in the past couple of years, I really changed up, not necessarily how I'm playing, but the setup. I used to use a lot heavier strings and a way thicker pick, and now I use these. I don't know if it's called a light gauge. It's nylon. It's like very vintage style, and I have a pretty heavy right hand yeah. when it comes to certain things, yeah. and I like to do these like. <laughs> It's, real, it's a lot of upstrokes. Right? That stuff, when it was a heavier pick, is was giving my hand problems. Right. Because all the force was getting transferred just straight into my hand because the pick, the pick <laughs> yeah. was so heavy. Right. And I use nines now just because it's... Oh, nines. Yep. Nice. I probably would go lower, but I can I keep it in tune. And nines sound older as much as people don't want to... And that's what they the all Rick use. Beato video. That is 100% why I switched. We talked about it the other day. Yeah. That's why I saw the video and listened. And I, I had been going down anyway. I'd gone from 12s, I up to 12s at one point and standard on my Les Paul. And then 11s forever, 11 to 49. And then 10s. And I saw that video and I was like, let me put some 9.5s on. And I was like, okay, it sounds really good. Yeah. And then I down to 9s. And I've tried 8s, not for like at gigs, but just at home. And it's yeah. too, it like hurts my hand. I'm over playing it, it too much. Oh, right. You know what I mean? Like. Right. It, right. There's not enough the tension. Delicate, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's not enough tension for me to like, even. Yeah, reading Braille at that point. You gotta yeah, read. it's totally different. Yeah, <laughs> or like when you yeah trying to figure out what number it is in the elevator just by the Braille. <laughs> right. You know I mean? You'd never know. I don't think there's a hollow body. I've played the, uh, this guitar before. I don't think there's a hollow body at this price point. That is even at, for like twenty five hundred. I don't like, think there's a hollow body. Like period the H like this one thirty five, like the Heritage. Yep. Hollow body. I yeah, love but that. that's but like, like a love, huge body. Right. I don't like 335. I don't like that style. I'm a right. Les Paul guy yeah. my whole life. And this was the other guitar. This is the only guitar I've had that isn't my Les Paul that I have no inclination to even get rid of. And There's everything's never stock a, on it, right? Yeah, yeah. I took the pole pieces out of the neck pickup. I saw someone do it in a video on YouTube, and they were like, you could get lower output and like less clarity or let more clarity by taking out the pole pieces. Because if you unscrew the pole pieces like a little bit, like I have here, uh -huh. It definitely brings a different sound. You get more treble typically. So I kind of lower the pickup a little bit from how it comes and then raise the pole pieces. Uh -huh. So it's not any quieter. You do, by, by huh? you do it by ear. You don't yeah, do no, it don't. like you do like measure. I don't even own a thing to measure or anything. I'm not a I'm not a I'm running a one spot on my pedals. I don't yeah. I'm not fussy about that stuff. Right. You either know how to play or you don't. <laughs> There's no, all, all everyone's saying like the pedals and just go practice instead. That is really the case. And I'm not saying that because I'm a teacher or because I went to Berkeley, none of that. That's the way it is. And yeah, maple caps, totally fine, obviously. But like this all mahogany with all mahogany neck and it's an ebony fingerboard, which I found out I liked. I mean, it's a beautiful looking guitar. Yeah, it's I mean, a great, like, it's a great color. I don't think they make this color anymore. Like, it's like, like tobacco McCarty, I think is the, the color. It's all stuck. I haven't changed anything. But why not the... So it's because it, it was sounded too thin. Oh. It's kind of weaker sound, whereas yeah. that's still louder because it yeah, sounded too thin. Because that's usually the problem, is the pickup is the high E string sounds all wussy. And... <laughs> right? Yeah, but it's that's the neck. The neck pickup has to sound like that. I like the... Some people don't like when the pickups sound different. That's very different than... Right? Yeah, I like a trebly neck. And I like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want them to be like worlds apart, but like... What no. People think the bridge sounds like... I'm like, no, I want the bridge to be beefy. Yeah, yeah, this is like 9 something K. It's pretty... It's hotter than my... My Les Paul is like a 7.8. Yeah. Very traditional. Yeah, yeah. 
And the middle pickup, that's another thing, when you take the pole pieces out, the middle position sounds way better. Okay, I'm taking them out. It just sounds way oh, better. Oh, <laughs> You're a PRS guitarist. Mm -hmm. Artist, rather. Yeah. You're a PRS artist. What did you decide to work? With PRS. What? Played one of these guitars in a store. I was in a guitar center just selling some pedals or something like that, and I just saw this guitar and I was like, you know what? I I like I love the sound of an ES three thirty. Yeah. But I don't I don't want a, a, a guitar that's that big. It's not comfortable for me, and it's fully hollow, and it's so big that it'll feed back. This has never fed back anyone who's looking once. Really? Never. I've used Twins live and played that volume, and never even it'll it'll feed back. In a musical way, but it's not like it's not like howling, right, like, a, to like a like a casino, or like <laughs> yeah, a Gary Clark like, Jr. Hey. I see the record over there. Yeah. Not in that way, um, but no, it really this guitar really sings. This guitar has made me a more I would say maybe a more melodic guitar player. Fuzz doesn't stack into everything well, and not a, not all the time does fuzz sound good straight into an amp. That's right. typically why people don't use fuzz because they don't stack it. But if you stack a fuzz into the nobles. Here's just the nobles. It's a lot smoother than the special cranker, but that's more like... Still pretty dynamic, but fuzz into it. It focuses it a lot, and without that... It's a lot messier, the reverb goes crazy. It, it, yeah, it'll cut through like, the mix hey, better. Hey, hey. You know, I use, I use my deco for that. Just I want to try the one saturation. Of those. Yeah, because like funny, the saturation these... just has like a great way of like bringing it together. And it, and it does give a little compression, like a, like maybe a you yeah, but like, like a maybe not a, like a Dynacom, like right, like, amp like it just goes like. Bip. But here's the thing: certain things are expensive and they're worth it. Right. Certain it, things are not. But that also depends on who you. Are. I did pedal demos for years. Love pedal right. stuff. Yeah. And like that stuff's not expensive. Yeah. But a lot of it sounds really good. Right, but it's, does it sound good? It it's sounds like, good. That's what I care about. I don't care about <clears throat> the hype. I like stuff that actually people like. No one talks about. I have a pedal like, that I what? that I don't have. My I'm going to pick it up today on my amp, and um, it's I painted it silver during when we were in lockdown. Yeah, and I don't want anyone to know what it is. It's it's you can, Are you can still say it now. Or you're not going to no, say no no no. I'm not gonna <laughs> say it. It's too. You have too many people watching. No, because <laughs> I want to be able to get it if it breaks. It's loud as shit. it's a boost there's only one knob and it hits the front of the amp and it like explodes this is the hint i'll give everyone it just got reissued but not by the same company it's a boost of some kind and it's kind the of like is on. yeah <laughs> Wait, so you used to work for love Bible? yeah i would say work for is a or like work with yeah 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 i i got to keep the pedals as yeah. a payment i was in college so i guess that is work one time i had a board and it was all only love pedal stuff and like one univibe that was this huge mjm like massive <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> univibe Ones that I would say if you can find that are really worth it is the Big Box Amp 11. It's white and has cream knobs on it. Unbelievable. Yeah. There's videos on my Instagram of me playing this Berkeley Blues Jazz Night. Only four people made it and I made it the last, this my senior year. I had a great band and stuff and I'm using that for pretty much all the lead sound. Just that. Good luck finding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't see them very often. I look for them just to have and I don't know if I'd use it all the time, but yeah. What sounds old is the way you play. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? If it's real polished and you're shredding, like you're you're of an Ingve technique. Right. right. It's not gonna sound like Jimmy Vaughn. Do you know what I mean? Right. So you switch in and out of those things and that makes it sound older. Like that whole Jimmy Vaughn is this thing where he does that and he pushes it out to tune on purpose. This is a brand new guitar, but that sounds older. Right. The style. Because. Right? Yeah. It's just, yeah, the approach is huge. What are you going for? Why are you playing? Yeah, why is huge. So the why. I don't know if you ever, the power of, what is it? The power of why, Simon Sinek? It's a pretty good it's book. It's funny. He asked me if I was into philosophy. And no, but I care so much about the guitar and music. I would have... I don't know what I would be. I, when people ask me, like, what would you be doing? I mean, I don't know, to be honest. And my dad has always said, um, plan B only distracts from plan A. Uh -huh. 
So there's no need for that. Yeah. There, this is going to work. So guitar is your philosophy. Yeah. And it's also <laughs> like I know how music affects me at all times. And there's I curate my mood based on what I'm going to be listening to or what I'm going to be playing. And there's also nothing wrong with not playing guitar for like a couple days. Yeah. Most of the time when I've, pl- I've gone somewhere and I can't play guitar for like a week or vacation, or especially in high school and stuff, my family would go away every summer and... I wouldn't have a guitar and they come back and you're not stuck anymore. You still know how to play, obviously, but you're not playing the same old you played two weeks ago. And yeah, asking yourself why you're doing things in practice and why did you play that way and why are you doing this and this so much? We all have things we do all the time, like things that make us who we are as a player. If you don't understand why you're doing it, what's the point? There's no intent. You're just doing it because you can. That's my biggest pet peeve with people in their vibrato. People don't work on that. I had a lesson with Andy Timmons when I was in high school. He lived in McKinney, Texas, where I used to live. He was like, you got this great British sound, because I didn't listen to anything but like Clapton and Free and Cream and Hendrix and sure. Jimmy Page. Then I didn't listen to anything else, really. He was like, yeah, but your vibrato is good, but it's you're pushing it sharp every time. Like, it was, it was probably as egregious as... Like that. I was doing it way too fast. I love Paul Kossif and stuff. Yeah, yeah, Angus, yeah. And that stuff's really... And that's, you know, I I don't want, I can't do it anymore because ever since then I've spent time really practicing. So that way, if there's a phrase and I'm playing, I consider vibrato part of the phrase. It's not something that I do. You know how hard it is for most people to play a note and not do that? (laughs) Impossible. And how fast I actually have control over it and it not be flat or Like that makes a phrase. This is like the the, the twin snake problem of <laughs> Instagram. Where it's <laughs> yeah, like, we talked about that you too. gotta be hard on yourself, but not so hard that you actually stop. You gotta be hard on yourself, but not because someone else is better than you. Right. You gotta be hard on yourself because go. you wanna be better. Yeah. If you don't wanna be better, None of this gear or anything, or picks or strings, or you switching from 11s to 9s, none of that's going to make you better at playing guitar. Because if you don't hear it, it's fake. You're not playing, you're playing (laughs) you've heard before. You're basically a looper pedal. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not playing, you're repeating things. You're like, you you are recorded, you're playing, (laughs) you're the recorder. As in, a, you're like recording other things and then reproducing them, right. which is what we all do. But you have to practice enough to disguise it. We're all playing other people's right. shit. Nobody's really all original. Right. That doesn't exist. Right. And ev- the greatest players will tell you that. Yeah. I just watched a Peter Frampton interview the other day with Rick Beato. He was like, I was listening to Django and I was listening to, you wouldn't necessarily know that. Yeah. Or, or Kenny Burrell or yeah. George Benson. Those guys sound very different than Peter Frampton. But where sure. he's coming from musically is that... So I asked Clay this, and I want to see if you have a story about this. Sure. Do you have a story about the worst note you've ever played? Playing this gig, and I, the band that I was playing with, the Jason Lee McKinney band, looked them up, they're really great. I think maybe the first or second gig ever. There's like 40 tunes to learn. The gigs are like three hours long, and it's like most of it's original, so I don't, I've never heard it before. Oh, and yeah. I went, I literally did it so, and I did it with Here, so this, much. But you play yours. One, two. <laughs> so bad and I came in with all of the confidence like, in the world like because like just... that's how you're supposed to be you're supposed to be playing like you are like you know this stuff you don't need to let people know that you don't and I did I did think I, I did think I knew it but then I was in I was, I was in E flat for the gig like I was supposed to be we had to restart because I didn't know what was wrong oh so that's why it got bad they were like this is the first time in 10 years we've ever had to restart a song so like from scratch this is the first tune of the gig <laughs> We had to totally start the song again in so the right like key. So like the tension in the room was like yeah, and I and I'm I was like what the f- I was like what's wrong, and yeah, yeah but is it me bad. or is it you? No, it's for sure me. But at the time where you're like oh no I knew it was oh me. you yeah yeah because everyone else is in the right key so it can't right. be all of them. It was they a new wrote guy. The, they wrote the tune. Hey new guy. Yeah, <laughs> it was bad. And that's for sure the worst one. It took me a second. I knew, it, but it happened again. Not as when I was younger. Right. Which when you get, because you get, you know, yeah, you're like, I've been playing this. guitar for 20 years, more. Probably 20, it'll be 20 something this summer. And 
Yeah. That's a long, I'm only 26, it's a long time. So you get comfortable playing the guitar, you're just like, oh, I learned, I practiced this enough, I know it. And then you didn't. <laughs> So yeah, that's the worst one for sure. I don't know if that's better or worse. No, that's it's great because it's like, I mean, it just like, it happens to everyone. I think it's always really interesting to be like, man. Like, it does. You get served humble pie in so many different ways oh as a musician. God. Let's go over one more thing. Yeah, for sure. Can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? <laughs> with my life, <laughs> Shit. with my life. All right, no, I'll okay. try. Let's take a simple line and let's go through your approach of like gradually adding complexity Okay. And uh, interesting things to it. So yeah, yeah. just something as simple as actually we'll take that lick. Um, if that's like the lead into my solo. Phrasing. Change the phrasing of it up. Okay, so that's it. That's different. Slides and vibrato are your friend in phrasing because how you... Right, and those little things that like, those little fall off things add to the phrasing. And also if you hear like, probably some of the most interesting phrasing to me is like Robin Ford. Yeah. Robin, especially now, Robin Ford now, he's playing over the bar line like it's his job. It's insane. And they're so interesting to listen to because it's, it's not like, that's, you know, stock. Right, that's right. That. And I notice you're hitting the other strings too. You're giving a little yeah, sauce yeah. on the other. And then, but again, that's intentional is to go like, you create ruckus. And then Resolve. bring it back. That's that push and pull that most great, most if not all great guitars have that. And that's why we gravitate towards that. If something's one, we talked about this the other day, two dimensional, three dimensional. A lot of people view guitars and it's, they, they have a two dimensional reason for wanting to play guitar. It sounds cool, it looks cool. Yeah. The people that are great have a three-dimensional reason or four. It's not just about how it sounds and how it looks. Yes, that's cool. Right, those are true. It is true. a show, you're gonna go see a show, and if everyone looks whack, you're not gonna wanna go back. But if the music is really good, jazz is the best example of that. Some, a lot of jazz people are not cool, like heroes, like Joe Pass is cool if you're into that. Yeah. But he doesn't look cool, he looks like the Pringles guy. <laughs> So, he's not cool looking. He doesn't look like the guys, he doesn't right. look like the Oasis or, right. you know, the Stones or whatever. Yeah. But the third, the third dimensional reason is you can't help but do this. There yeah. isn't, you really want to communicate something is a, is, a, is a reason. I want to make you feel something that you wouldn't have felt otherwise. Okay, well, let's, uh, make me feel something real quick. And let's start off with that stock. Okay. And I'm just going to drone on E. Okay.
that hopefully like not not and I don't mean like make you feel something like this like real deep thing. I just mean something. Right. All those de- those are all decisions. I don't. I mean, maybe there's a few mess ups, maybe, probably. But all those like wild things where I'm bent. I think I bent probably for the flat seven, yeah. which is two and a half steps. Yeah. Right? Because I can. Right. Because you can. You can do whatever you want. You could do, and it, that's gonna, some people, you know, it's div- more divisive doing crazier shit like that. Right. Jeff Beck is a good example. People don't like some of that stuff. My friend Sean says his bird noises. Which is, <laughs> which, is which is, which, listen, I, Man. I, I get it, but it works. Yeah. You know? It's not for everybody. I'm not trying to change your life. But I'm trying that to, would be nice. I'm trying to conjure anything. For like a little bit. In, in your heart. Anything that yeah. you, that can affect you. If, if, if only that, I want to play my guitar. Yeah. Like if the only feeling, but if every you're, time you're feeling something. Because if you're feeling it, they will too. Right. If you go on stage and your intention is to let it go, like be, let go and be a vulnerable, then that's going to come out. It's going to come through. It's going to be obvious. This is some, So I, I spoke at a conference um, last week and I sat down with like probably 40 different artists and writers. And the thing that always surprised them was like, what's your best song? They wouldn't know. Because I don't think it's that they don't have one. It's that they're too embarrassed to say, I like this song. This is, I think, my best representation of Yeah, which of is work. not good. And as an artist, I know, and, and, and it isn't good. It's a terrible thing. And I think it's something like, again, it's the twin, the twin side of being artists. It's like, yes, you have to be hard on yourself, but you also be confident enough to say, this is my best stuff. Maybe it's not for you, but it's my yeah, best. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Maybe for somebody. Right, it just it's depends like, on how long it takes for, the, for it to get there. Right. It's not going to get to everybody immediately. For sure, yeah. And that's the hardest part about being a professional musician is <laughs> is the it takes fucking forever excuse my language you didn't bleep no, that out no, it takes yeah. forever yeah i mean 20 years i've been playing guitar yeah and only the last what five years yeah three quarters of it yeah i haven't been making do you know what i mean like, yeah, yeah i was just practicing to get there right yeah, yeah. The, the the red number next to like a musician expenses for me is like insane it's bananas. the black number is like the, the same. Yeah. It's the yeah. same number. Yeah. So, which wow. means it's we're, we're not in the red or the black. We're, we're there's, just, but there's nothing going on. Yeah. If it goes in the gig and it's not good, it's, it gets sold the next day. If I can't use it. <laughs> Ruthless. I don't, I don't give it time. No, because I you know. Yeah. If you're honest with it, you're just like, yeah, I connected with this or I didn't or there was problems with it. If there's problems with it, I'm not changing everything else to make up for one pedal. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 like yeah, to yeah. go like, oh, let's try, blah, blah, blah. Let's throw a battery in it or let's change cables. F*** all that. It's The pedal can go. I'm not, I'm not changing my rig for one pedal. You know what I <laughs> right, mean? Get on, get it's on board crazy. and get off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, same thing with a guitar. If but a guitar's not good without the pickups it came in, it's probably not that great of a guitar. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If the pickups that came in the guitar yeah. and you, you don't like it and it's the pickups fault, it's probably the guitar you don't like. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Right? Yeah. Isn't that I, your experience with it too? Yeah. No, no. I mean, um, there's a guitar I have that, and I changed the pickups in it and I love the pickups, but I'm like, I don't think I like this guitar. You can have preferences. And now I don't want that guitar though. For I mean, sure. the only thing, I'm just, I'm just masking it. Yeah. You're making it better, but that doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> you know? He gives lessons. Yes, I do. How do you give them? Via Zoom. Zoom. So yep. anyone in the world yeah. could get a lesson from this guy. Can yep. you believe it? So if you want to sound like that, play like that. Be like that. Practice. <laughs> practice. But practice <laughs> with him yeah. as your guide. Absolutely. I guess I will say this, like going through, you know, I'm, I really only, I haven't taken very many guitar lessons. And playing with you, I was like, man, if I had a guitar teacher <laughs> like Sebastian growing up, I would be a lot better and I'd be a lot farther and I would have skipped all the BS that I thought I needed yeah, to Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. and, and um, because, because most guitar teachers to are too br- nice. And Sebastian, it's not that I'm not, uh, but no, no, but they're too nice. I'm not gonna get you. I'm not gonna tell you you sound bad, but you, I'm gonna help you realize that you can sound better. Right. There's a big difference, because there's like bad, and then there's whatever. And I don't want to say that people are not bad. Like it is what it is. Well, you're at the level you're at, and that's not bad. Right. Hopefully, if you come to me, if you come to me and you're better than me, I'm gonna tell you you don't need lessons. <laughs> so if you're not that, whatever that is to you, it's totally about. Again, realizing what you're doing. That's all it takes. Right. If you do it mindfully and you do it on purpose and you commit to it, you'll get better. Yeah.